Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. In the 54th chapter of Isaiah, This is something, oh my, the Lord of hosts is his name and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of, of youth when thou was refused, saith thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee three days and nights. But with great mercies will I gather thee. That word mercy there is compassion. Great compassion will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness. Now that Hebrew word is chesed. It's difficult to explain in English, but it's a it's covenant word. And it means the lesser is blessed of the greater. The lesser is blessed of the greater. Hallelujah. It's like seeing a, a, one of those great big horses, one of those big Big, healthy horses that just pull a load. And a Shetland pony <laughs> in yoke with that other horse. And his feet are just dangling up on the ground. <laughs> Amen. You and I are the little horse. <laughs> One of the men that, ex that explained that to me like this. He said, Hesed is when you see, and he was a missionary to Africa. He said, when you see a mama elephant and she has a baby elephant and you begin to get too close to that baby and her big ears go about like this, you about to experience Hesed, brother. <laughs> you better back off. And when are we going to become so covenant minded that we begin to receive and realize that our covenant is with the almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do everything in line with it and not even know it. I, on the 13th day of April, 1962, Gloria Jean Niece, became Gloria Jean Copeland. We entered covenant. That's where we get that. Praise God. Well, brother, we have a prenuptial agreement. <laughs> oh, you're just talking about legal sex, partner. That's no covenant. When I took my place as her husband, I fully intended for her to have everything I have. And I'm still that way about her. Everything I have. All of it, including my life, if it takes it because I'm in covenant with her. Verse nine, are you there? This is as the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that has mercy, mercy on thee. 
verse 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, you shall condemn. You have the authority now that Jesus has been raised from the dead. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness of me, saith the Lord. Well, you have to break back, back up one verse. Behold, I created the smith that blows the coals in the fire that brings forth an instrument for his work. I have created the waster. It's not to destroy. I have created the waster that destroys in other words, I created him. I'll take care of him. Now, any tongue that rises against you, you condemn it. No weapon formed against you will prosper. So, oh, my brother and sister, don't go preaching that God's mad and rebuking. He's not mad anymore. He has retired. <laughs> and he's turned it all over to the sun and he's not mad at anybody. Glory to God. He went to hell so we don't have to go. <laughs> Glory to God. He was manifested in the flesh. That's when he was born in Bethlehem. Made alive in the spirit. That was in the middle of hell itself. Glory. And right there in the pit of hell, he took the devil's keys away from him. So what happened between the cross and the throne? Oh, think about it. Jesus preached the gospel in the pit of hell because all of paradise was watching. Paradise was the upper region of Sheol. Remember the rich man and Lazarus? The rich man lifted up his eyes and saw Father Abraham and he recognized him. Now he's in, he, he, there's, there's some amazing truth here. His body, his brain is in a hole somewhere. Because he's out of his physical body. Father Abraham said, son, remember All of your memories stored up in your spirit. Your brain is just the go-between between your spirit and your body and your intellect and so forth. The memory is still there. And there are people in hell today that remember the chances that they had to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. And that's one of the torments of hell. Jesus said, woe be unto the man that betrays me. Jesus gave him every chance to repent. Even in the garden, he called him friend. Covenant friend. Gave him an opportunity. He, he, I'm convinced that Judas actually thought that he would just like he had always done before, he would just walk out from amongst the midst of them. He didn't pay attention. He's too money-minded. The worst thing he did, he committed suicide in that condition. That was the worst thing. So, I believe he's in hell today. Remembering, 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 remembering. Oh, if I'd only done this. Well, thank you, Jesus. 
But that thief said, remember me. Now, don't, don't, when, when Jesus and the thief stepped out of their bodies, don't try to make linear time work. When they stepped out of their bodies, then you're over into timeless. Don't try to, except in that high Sabbath. Anyway, all of this has to do, and all of these things must need to be taught. Very simply. Somebody says, well, I don't agree with that. Well, fine. But don't put a frown on your face when you tell me that. It's okay. So you disagree. I, I'm right, but it, no. <laughs> Praise God. I'm right about this because this is what the book says. All right, now we'll go back to the Gospel of John <clears throat> in the fifth chapter <clears throat> and look at the 30th verse. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Now, look at the 38th verse. Praise God. Verse 36. But I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself which has sent me has borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And you have not his word abiding in you for whom he hath sent him, you believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they that which testify of me. For you will not come to me, you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that I have not the love of God. I know you that you have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? Do you not think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not the writings, how shall you believe my words? He turned all, everything, to the Father. Praise God. That verse 27. He hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in that which that your the grave, even the grave shall hear his voice. Then And in the eighth chapter of John, the 28th verse, Jesus said unto them, when you've lifted up the son of man, then shall you know that I am. He is in italics. I am. And I do nothing of myself, but as my father has taught me, I speak these things. And he that has sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. And he spoke these words. Many believed on him. Praise God. But then he said, verse 44, you're of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. So the, the, the eternal connection between Jesus and his father. Amen. 
And he's most well known for the healing and miracle ministry. All right. So now, Jesus went about the villages, the cities and villages, teaching, preaching, and healing. Jesus ordained the 12 in Matthew 10, 7 through 10 and 20. Let's turn to Matthew 10 as just as a uh, refresher here for a moment. Look at the seventh verse. When he had called unto him his 12, his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. I mean, he just starts off with healing. That's, that's his calling card. Acts 10, 38. Peter preached this. Let me give you a, a little insight here into something. You remember the centurion that built the synagogue in Capernaum? There's not centurions. A centurion is a Roman general officer. And he said, I, I'm, I'm not important enough for you to even come in my house. You just, he said, I'm a man of authority. I tell one to do this and do that and so forth. And he does it. You just say the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus said, I have not found such great faith, not in all of Israel. And his servant was healed that self same hour. Then he was the centurion at the cross. And he said, This must have be, must be the Son of God. He was highly impressed, and in the condition in which he was in, he still shouted that 22nd Psalm with a loud voice. That centurion's name was Cornelius. It pays to read the book. That was Cornelius. He just, oh, this just stayed on him. And he's a giving man. He loved God. He just didn't know him. Oh, uh, and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and an angel told him, uh, you go get Peter and he'll come down here and preach to you. You glory to God. And he did. And he was smart enough to take some other fellows with him because he's going to have to report this, that he's actually preached this to a Gentile. What did he preach? How? God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power Amen. who went about doing good and healing. Yeah. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Yeah, but Brother Copeland, that was Jesus. No, it wasn't. For God was with him. Yes. It was God who anointed a man. My, 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 my. This very hour, this very day, a man, a man, the second member of the Godhead, a man, a human man, Never been one like him before, but there's a whole bunch like him now. Amen. <laughs> now, what happened from the cross to the throne? We know. What did, what, what did the devil see on the day of Pentecost? Oh, the scripture said, had he known, he would have never crucified the Lord of glory. I guess not. 
He thought he had him. He thought he finally had him. He had him in hell. How can he get out? I'll tell you how he got out. By the power of the word of the living God, he took his keys away from him. He is no longer the only begotten son of God. He, the firstborn from the dead. Firstborn. And we were born of him. We have firstborn status. Because if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the book of Matthew, and we will close with this. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know whether you can see this or not. I marked it. In the 13th chapter, the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th verses. Look in the 19th verse. Have you, are you there? Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom. Verse 15. For this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes they have closed. Lest, read it, at any time they should see the gospel of the kingdom with their eyes and hear the gospel of the kingdom with their ears and should understand with their heart and, and should be converted, I should heal them. When? Anytime. Anytime. But you're going to have to put your eyes on it. You're going to have to put your ears on it. And make the decision. This is my heart and it has converted me. It's changed the way I think. It's changed the, uh, the, the, the way I look at it. It belongs to me and he'll do it anytime. He is anytime on ready. He is always ready. He's always been ready. He will always be ready. <laughs> Glory to God. The church should be taking healing to the world. Jesus, the gift to the world. The gift to the world. The Holy Spirit, the gift to the church. Kenneth Copeland at these upcoming KCM events. May 26 through 28, join us for the first ever Knoxville Victory Campaign in Tennessee. June 9 through 11, don't miss the Fargo Victory Campaign in North Dakota. And August 1 through 6, come to the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. KCM events are free to attend. Go to kcm.org slash events for more information and we'll see you there. The earth began in darkness with the Holy Spirit moving upon the face of the water until one thing changed. God spoke and his faith-filled words lit up the universe and formed all of creation. He put that same overcoming creative power inside of you. Get Kenneth Copeland's audio teaching, Faith-Filled Words Dominate the Law of Sin and Death and find out how to use your God-given faith to release light over any darkness you face. Whether you need healing, direction, peace, or finances, learn to access everything God's kingdom offers to be yours here and now. Your very salvation in Christ started by confessing what you believe about Jesus as your savior. Now all of your life of faith works the same way. No matter what's going on in the world around you, when you get God's word into your heart, everything changes. Your faith-filled words will dominate sin and death 
every time. Request your free CD series, Faith-Filled Words Dominate the Law of Sin and Death. Learn how developing faith in your inner man by speaking God's Word can lead you to receive His promises. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01-225-787-310. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office today. Hello, I'm Larry Warren. When the unexpected comes your way, you can turn to God's Word for your answer. If you need someone to pray with you, call Kenneth Copeland Ministries Prayer Line. Our prayer ministers are licensed and trained in the Word of God to pray in faith with you. God's Word contains the answer to every problem and has the power to overcome every challenge. Take hold of those promises of God for you. KCM has prayer ministers in all of our offices around the world. To contact the one nearest you, go to kcm.org for their information. The Knoxville Victory Campaign starts tonight at 7 p.m. Join Kenneth Copeland at the Knoxville Convention Center May 26th through 28th in Knoxville, Tennessee. Set aside these three days to hear the Word of God and receive wisdom and direction for your life. There will be a partner service tomorrow morning and a special healing service Saturday morning. To watch this event live, go to kcm.org slash events. This is Brother Larry reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. To learn more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith, check out our website for free content and resources available to you on kcm.org.uk. Welcome to kcm.org, your study center for victory. Get real help for real life problems. Select a topic for answers straight from the Bible. Then believe, speak, pray, learn, and apply what you've heard and read to experience real change in your situation. Each step provides pages of articles, video teachings, topical scripture lists, and recorded prayers and confessions from the Copelands. KCM.org has made it simple to tap into God's wisdom for real help in your life. KCM.org meets you where you are. Take the word of faith wherever you go with the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Since 1973, KCM has delivered the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine worldwide. We're reaching nearly 400,000 people in 202 countries and territories on five continents all absolutely free. Every magazine contains faith-building articles from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest authors. Read encouraging stories from people like you in testimonies of real life victory. Equip your kids with powerful tools for spiritual growth in Commander Kelly's Corner. With a variety of viewing formats available, sharing is easier than ever. Download a digital copy for your tablet or mobile device. Click on the interactive magazine option where you'll find bonus content, videos, and downloads. Sign up for your free monthly subscription or download your copy today on our KCM website.